Welcome everyone. I will discuss in this presentation ventilation and perfusion matching with related clinical tips. I have two main objectives. First, basic, basic pathophysiology of hypoxemia. Second, physiology of ventilation and perfusion matching and the related clinical tips. So what's the definition of hypoxemia? And before that, what's the low oxygen saturation? It is actually variable according to lower limit of your target saturation. So if your target saturation in your unit is uh, 90 to 92, then anything below 90% oxygen saturation should be considered as low saturation. If your target saturation between 85 to 90 percent then any saturation below 85 should be considered as low saturation actually in our unit we are considering 88 to 92 percent as acceptable target saturation hypoxemia is any oxygen saturation below 80 percent which was the, the limit used in the canadian oxygen trial General mechanisms of hypoxemia, it could be due to hypoventilation. If the carbon dioxide is high in the alveoli, then the partial pressure of oxygen will be dropped in the alveoli, and the consequences will be hypoxemia. Or could be due to limited diffusions with, with thickening of the alveolar capillary membrane, for example, due to chronic lung diseases, then it might, it might uh, cause significant hypoxemia or it could be due to ventilation perfusion mismatch which is our topic for today or the extreme of ventilation perfusion mismatch which is a right to left shunt and I mean in this situation intrapulmonary right to left shunt or it could be due to perfusion or low blood flow to the lung for example, if you have infant with shock or severe pulmonary hypertension with reduced blood flow to the lung. So I will focus today on ventilation perfusion mismatch and the extreme of VQ mismatch, which is right to left shunt. In this slide, I will discuss in some details ventilation perfusion apparatus. We are inhaling in atmospheric pressure, oxygen pressure of 150 millimeter mercury, which is 21% of air, and 50, 570 of nitrogen, 0.3 of carbon dioxide. Passing through the dead space, so the concentration or the partial pressure of oxygen will be dropped from 150 to 100 in the alveoli. So the partial pressure of oxygen and in the, in the alveoli in healthy subject, it's around 100 millimeter mercury. The nitrogen will stay around the same, 570, and the carbon dioxide will be increased because alveoli should be containing now some carbon dioxide diffused from the blood back to the alveoli and then with uh, exhalation the alveolar air will be passing back through the dead space then the oxygen will be increased a little bit from the oxygen present in the dead space and then you have partial pressure of oxygen now in the exhaled air around 112 milliliter, millimeter mercury and the co2 will be dropped because it's now diluted with the air in the dead space to 28 millimeter mercury. And then we, are, we have the right side of the heart containing blood, which is passing through the pulmonary artery to the pulmonary capillaries and back to the right, left heart after getting the oxygen from the alveoli. So we have on the venous side of the circulation 
partial pressure of oxygen around 50 mm per mercury partial pressure of nitrogen about 575 mm per mercury carbon dioxide of 50 and the saturation of oxygen around 75 percent and again this is a normal subject and after the blood ba passing through the pulmonary capillaries on the arterial side you should have such partial pressure of oxygen around 97 or close to 100 partial pressure of nitrogen is the same 575 carbon dioxide of 40 millimeter mercury and the saturation close to 100 percent the alveolar ventilation is 150 ml per kg per minute in neonates the normal neonate with the each breath there's about 4 to 6 ml per kg of air inhaled if you multiply that by respiratory rate which is around 40 per minute you'll get around 200 there's a minute ventilation uh, but the alveolar ventilation is we considered about 50 ml as a dead space ventilation in the dead space so the ventilation perfusion mismatch we are considering the alveolar ventilation not the minute ventilation on the other side we have the cardiac output for each stroke volume we have around 2 ml of blood ejected uh, through the right ventricle to the left atrium per each beat if you multiply that by the heart by heart rate you will get the cardiac output which is around 200 ml per kg per minute so the ratio between the ventilation 150 ml per kg per minute to the blood flow or cardiac output which is 200 ml per kg per minute you will get a ratio around 0 0.8 which is normal VQ match between perfusion and ventilation we have to consider that the alveolar ventilation only during inspiration and the perfusion is during systole so at the end of expiration you should have 25 ml per kg of air remaining in the lung at the same time you have around 10 ml of blood remaining in the capillaries in during the stool so the 200 ml per kg per minute passing through the pulmonary circulation during systole and this per minute and you have at least 10 ml of blood remaining in the capillaries even at the end of uh, systole or beginning of diastole assume you have the air not passing through the alveoli patent alveoli just passing through the dead space then you should have the same partial pressure of oxygen and nitrogen including the carbon dioxide exhaled without giving anything to the blood so that's extreme of ventilation perfusion mismatch which is dead space the other extreme this in case of you have normal circulation so the blood will get oxygenated through the alveoli and then passing to the right heart but in case of you have shunt so they have blood, blood completely shunted outside the alveoli in this case the blood is passing through the shunt without getting any oxygen so this is a right to left shunt and you have 100% right to left shunt that's intractable with life so the infant will die so VQ mismatch will be anything between normal ventilation to reduce the ventilation and the extreme of that is um, dead space and the other extreme if you have the blood passing away from the ventilation perfusion apparatus away from the alveoli without getting any oxygen which is right to left shunt remember that the atmospheric pressure is around 760 including 
the water vapor and the nitrogen partial pressure is almost the same in the alveolar atmosphere and also venous and arterial blood so sum of all pressures should be around 760 if you are at the sea level nitrogen cycle in the lung is not actually uh, silent so there is a, a circle or cycle of nitrogen so the lung is getting some nitrogen from the blood and it, and also there's diffusion of some nitrogen from the alveoli to the blood so there is active process of nitrogen and nitrogen is important to maintain functional residual capacity so the alveoli remained uh, inflated well at the end of expiration basically because of the nitrogen not because of the oxygen so what's the story of the nitrogen there is a very interesting study uh, published in, in the journal of physiology long time ago 1910 and they concluded that inhalation of oxygen leads to negative nitrogen balance with higher venous partial pressure of nitrogen so more if you are inhaling or you, or you have subject inhaling pure oxygen and there is no nitrogen in the alveoli then the venous partial pressure of nitrogen will be much higher than the partial pressure of nitrogen in the arterial blood what does that mean it means that there is continuous loss of nitrogen through the lung so the lung is not getting nitrogen from the body or the, ni the nitrogen is not diffused from the lung to the body and the lung is getting still getting nitrogen from the body there is no evidence that excess nitrogen is due to excess production by metabolism so what's the source of nitrogen in the venous blood it is from the tissues so the excess in the venous blood is due to gradual leakage of nitrogen from fat and fat like tissues during oxygen inhal uh, inhalation and the main tissues containing fat like brain and bone marrow so these tissues will undergo breakdown and loss of nitrogen and this nitrogen will be moved out through the lung and through the venous compartment so if you have subject inhaling excess of oxygen it means that the nitrogen will be washed out of the lung in this case the lung vital capacity will be reduced gradually over time and it will be more severe with, high, with the higher oxygen partial pressure inhaled partial pressure of oxygen and over time if you are inhaling pure oxygen for a long period of time your lung eventually will get collapsed clinical tips for the previous few slides inhaled oxygen leads to nitrogen wash out nitrogen is important to maintain functional residual capacity and to maintain body nitrogen balance loss of body nitrogen through the lung in infants on high oxygen fraction may lead to tissue damage the impact of nitrogen wash out on outcomes is still unknown In, the, in this slide, we'll see the two extremes of hydration perfusion mismatch. So we have in the middle here the perfect lung. So normal lung and well perfused. So the blood passing through the lung and getting well oxygenated at the end. So the perfect perfect ventilation perfusion match is around 0.8. then if the ventilation reduced because of the lung, if any lung disease like lung collapse pneumonia chronic lung disease in this situation the ventilation will be reduced but perfusion will not be affected then the ratio between ventilation and perfusion will be reduced to 0 0.6 0 0.4 0 0.5 
point 0.2 at the end you have 0 over 1 which is 0 you have 0 ventilation which is impossible to happen in a, a, a subject who is, is still alive on the other hand if you have perfusion suboptimal perfusion or suboptimal blood supply so the ventilation will be remained normal or close to normal but the perfusion will be affected then the ratio will be increased more than 1 1.2 1.4 1.8 and so on until you reach at the end dead space dead space when you have air passing through the uh, air passages and the uh, alveoli and there is no blood flow around the conditions like this if you have pulmonary hypertension with vasoconstriction of pulmonary blood uh, arterioles massive pulmonary embolism shock chronic lung disease with significant pulmonary hypertension on the other hand when you have reduced ventilation up to significant right to left shunt which is extreme you have 100% right to left shunt it means that you have the blood passing through the lung without getting getting any oxygen so blue blood coming to the lung and getting out as blue as well there is no oxygen saturation um, to maintain oxygenation of the tissues in this condition you have lung collapse pneumonia chronic lung disease with no pulmonary hypertension or lung congestion first we'll discuss ventilation perfusion mismatch in this model you have reduced ventilation in one lung so if, if the infant inhaling room air so oxygen 150 millimeter mercury and the venous saturation is 50 percent arterial saturation 70 percent so definite hypoxemia the alveolar oxygen partial pressure of oxygen around 50 so the normal alveolar pressure of oxygen as we mentioned before around 100 so reduced to almost by 50 percent and partial pressure alveolar partial pressure of carbon dioxide is around 40 which is normal so there is no issue with ventilation but mainly with low partial pressure of oxygen inside the alveoli so the partial pressure of oxygen reduced by 50 uh, by almost from 100 to 50 so almost you need to double the oxygen uh, inhaled uh, oxygen from room air to around 40 percent so you have 300 millimeter mercury of uh, partial pressure of inhaled oxygen in this situation you may have the alveolar oxygen improved to 70 percent and now you have the saturation improved to 90 percent and partial pressure of, uh, of oxygen in the arteries improved from 40 to 60 millimeter mercury in this slide you have the oxygen distribution curve as you know the oxygen distribution curve is horizontal axis representing partial pressure of oxygen and the vertical axis representing oxygen saturation and the oxygen distribution curve is more shifted to the left in newborn and in newborn gradually be shifted to the right due to gradually change of the vital, hemo vita, vital hemoglobin to adult hemoglobin so presence of high percentage of fetal hemoglobin will shift the curve slightly to the left is, it benef is this beneficial to the newborn or not so let us discuss this in more details assume that we have partial pressure of oxygen around 45 or 50 percent then can be um, associated with oxygen saturation around 90 or a little bit above 90 percent which is acceptable 
and if you have around 55 millimeter mercury of partial pressure of oxygen now, now you can have very acceptable oxygen saturation around 95 percent this in case of you have newborn before any transfusion of adult hemoglobin then if you transfuse a newborn with adult hemoglobin then the oxygen decision curve will be shifted almost to be the same like adult curve with a little bit shifted to the right in this situation you need higher partial pressure of oxygen to get the same oxygen saturation then you may need a little bit higher oxygen inhaled oxygen to maintain that partial pressure so you have range between 50 to close to 60 partial pressure of oxygen to get reasonable oxygen saturation but you need higher partial pressure 70 to 80 to get the same level of saturation to assess infant with, with uh, ventilation perfusion mismatch we may apply oxygen reduction test at the bedside for example if we have infant with around 45 percent oxygen um, inhaled oxygen fraction uh, of inspired oxygen around 0.45 and his saturation is around 97 so the horizontal axis representing the inhaled oxygen in percent or as a fraction and the vertical axis representing oxygen saturation so I am at the bedside. I'm, I'm, I'm the, I am trying to wean the oxygen gradually by two to five percent stepwise, and they will see the impact or the response of, of the infant with ventilation perfusion mismatch to oxygen reduction. So we have multiple levels of ventilation perfusion mismatch. We have 0.8, which is normal if, we, if the infant is inhaling room air was good saturation so normal ventilation perfusion match and then reduced mismatch with mismatch of 0.4 mismatch of 0.2 and then 0.15 and so on so with oxygen reduction I'm reducing the oxygen now so with the, each step oxygen reduced by 2 to 5 percent you have the saturation dropped at the same time and continue to drop and now we have around 35 percent inhaled oxygen and saturation dropped to 90 and then dropped to, dropped to 85 percent and I stopped doing the oxygen reduction test and then I have rough estimation of the ventilation perfusion mismatch around 0.2 so this infant lost around uh, 0.6 of his ventilation capacity ventilation perfusion mismatch is very sensitive to oxygen reduction and also very responsive if you increase the oxygen back the response will be reasonable to get back into higher saturation in this um, slide we can notice that when we reduce the oxygen we reduced the oxygen a little bit between 45 to 35 percent but we get significant drop of saturation from 97 to 80 five percent so small a change in the inhaled oxygen fraction can lead to significant change in oxygen saturation this is typical in ventilation perfusion mismatch on there is uh, a software available online and we can apply the same concept on the software so you have inhaled oxygen pressure by kappa which if you are at the sea level it will be almost the same oxygen saturation sorry inhaled oxygen fraction so if the infant in, uh, in inhaling 35 percent it will be almost 35 kappa pressure so we applied oxygen reduction in this infant from 35 to 33 2% stepwise down to 26 
and we recorded the saturation at the same time well, so with, with, with each step with uh, oxygen reduction we recorded the saturation at the same time and it should be stepwise max uh, minimum of five minutes between each step and we apply that on the graph and we have also to select the current hemoglobin of the infant at the time of the test so in this graph I, I should select the right left shunt according to the color of the line or the curve here so we have almost color of uh, the color here is red so most of the points consistent with the red color so the right left shunt of fraction is around 20 percent and the given ventilation perfusion ratio around 0.37 You can notice the same that there is a significant reduction of the oxygen saturation with a small change in the inhaled oxygen fraction. Clinical tips for the previous few slides. Infants with lung diseases and ventilation perfusion mismatch are responsive to oxygen therapy. Arterial oxygen saturation drops significantly with the worsening of ventilation perfusion mismatch or aggressive weaning of oxygen. So it should be very gradual over time. Maximum 2 to 5 percent stepwise. Weaning should be gradual with reduction of FI2 by 2 percent stepwise and 5 minutes intervals. Blood transfusion might help in optimizing oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin, but at the same time shifts oxygen transfusion curve to the right, and this might, might lead to more FiO2 requirement as higher partial pressure of oxygen is needed to achieve the target saturation, as we explained on the graph. To avoid hyperoxia, partial pressure of oxygen is acceptable between 50 to 60 millimeter mercury before transfusion or 70 to 80 millimeter mercury after repeated transfusions remember that the blood volume of any normal infant around 85 to a little bit more to up to 100 ml per kg in preterm infants then you need about four to five transfusions if you are transfusing 20 cc per kg to shift almost all of his fetal hemoglobin to adult hemoglobin. Now we'll shift to discuss the extreme of ventilation perfusion mismatch with, which is a right to left shunt, intrapulmonary right to left shunt. In this slide will to make it easy and simple to understand we assume that we have one lung co completely collapsed and the other lung is normal so the normal lung is getting blood around 75 percent saturation venous blood and now getting out of the lung fully saturated of 100 percent the other lung because it's totally collapsed the blood is passing through the lung without getting any oxygen so in 75 percent and out 75 percent saturation so the mean saturation would be around 87 percent assume you give oxygen to this infant so the this lung is getting normal oxygen with the room air and without any oxygen the situation is 100 percent the other lung cannot get any oxygen because it's collapsed so the oxygen will not change the saturation higher than 87 percent because of significant right drift chunk up to 50 percent that's severe significant right drift chunk because of hypoxemia you may consider to give nitric oxide if you give nitric oxide to this infant 
what will happen nothing the one of the compensatory mechanisms of the collapsed lung vasoconstriction to shift more blood to the healthy lung but with nitric oxide actually might vasodilate the blood in the collapsed lung and might worsen the hypoxemia nitric oxide might be um, absorbed by the pulmonary circulation and part of it might, might vasodilate the pulmonary, the pulmonary circulation in the collapsed lung if we apply oxygen reduction test in the previous model because the ventilation perfusion mismatch in this situation will be severe and right to left shunt is the extreme of that so the infant is requiring high oxygen fraction of oxygen around 90 percent so we apply the oxygen reduction remember that this infant oxygen saturation will be around 80 7 or high 80s to low 90s and it cannot be increased more than that because of the significant right to left shunt so the bedside nurse or the respiratory therapist will try to achieve the, tar the target saturation higher than that above 90 percent so we'll keep increasing the oxygen without any improvement but if we do the opposite if we reduce the oxygen back what will happen so we have the saturation now is almost 80 uh, 8 or 87 percent and you have such, uh, the oxygen fraction around 90 or 0.9 apply oxygen reduction so the oxygen reduced there is no change in the oxygen saturation more reduction no change more reduction slight change slight change so you can reduce oxygen significantly like from 90 to 50 percent uh, inhaled oxygen was very small change in the oxygen saturation and the same if you do the opposite if you keep increasing the oxygen or, give, or you keep giving oxygen then the saturation will not improve higher than that so you have big change in the inhaled oxygen fraction with a very small change in the oxygen saturation if you apply that on the shunt curve slide rule which is available as I mentioned on uh, online the inspired oxygen fraction is high it is by a cab and as I mentioned will be the same if you are at the sea level 55 will be 55 uh, percent inhaled oxygen and the saturation 92 you reduce the from 55 to 52 will be 92 there is no change reduced again to 49 91 slight change so you can keep reducing until you have significant desaturation and then you can stop you should stop so you have in this situation significant right left shunt which is around 25 percent and you have VQ match severe 0.21 ventilation perfusion ratio so you have more than 0.6 or the ventilation capacity has been lost in this situation clinical tips significant right to left intrapulmonary shunt is common with severe parenchymal lung diseases right to left shunt characterized by Arterial saturation is usually at the lower side of the target saturation usually low 90s or mid to high 80s and giving oxygen extra oxygen will not gonna help improving the saturation higher than that arterial saturation does not improve even with higher inhaled oxygen weaning is successful when the infant is quiet so agitation or crying will worsen significantly the ventilation perfusion mismatch and worsening right left shunt and it should be stepwise by two percent every five minutes interval so if you have infant inhaling high oxygen fraction and you apply oxygen reduction with good response so you can reduce oxygen uh, to significant level from the basic level at the beginning of the test this is consistent with the right left shunt 
continue weaning as far as saturation is still within the target saturation until oxygen saturation starts to drop further below the target saturation. Next, I will discuss physiologic confounders affecting ventilation perfusion matching. The impact of position and gravity on ventilation perfusion matching. For a long time, we assumed that gravity affecting the blood distribution through the lung. So we have the basal part of the lung is getting more blood and less ventilation, and the top part of the lung is getting less blood and more ventilation. And it is actually the level above the heart which is getting less blood and level below the heart is getting more blood and we have three pressures controlling the oxygen or gas exchange through alveolar capillary membrane so we have the arterial alveolar pressure which is p uppercase a and arterial pressure lowercase a and venous pressure so the arterial pressure pre capillary and then you have the alveoli and then the post capillary pressure which is the venous pressure so in the top part of the lung you have almost collapsed capillaries and you have the alveolar pressure slightly higher than the arterial pressure which is higher than the venous pressure in this situation you have the blood passing through the capillaries only during the early part of the systole and then the capillaries will collapse without further perfusion. In this model you have the arterial pressure is higher than the alveolar pressure which is higher than the venous pressure. In this situation the blood is bathing through the capillaries during systole. At the end of systole and the beginning of the systole the capillaries will collapse or post capillary blood vessel will collapse so the blood flow will be mainly during systole in the basal part of the lung the blood flow will be continuous during systole and diastole now you have the arterial pressure higher than venous and venous pressure which is the post capillary pressure is higher than alveolar pressure so the blood flow will continue to move through this area so we have the the best perfused part of the lung so most of the lung will be zone 2 top part of the lung will be zone 1 and bottom part of the lung will be zone considered as zone 3 so is it the gravity affecting that we have very interesting study performed on baboons or monkeys and what they did, they examined the perfusion of the lung. So you have the, uh, in this graph, the horizontal axis representing the blood flow and the vertical axis representing the distance up to the head. So the top of the lung and bottom of the lung. So you have more perfusion at the bottom of the base of the lung and base of the lung including also part of the back of the lung. So the shaded area including more perfusion. So that's upright position. When they change the position to uh, subine position, there was no change, significant change, nothing happened. And more interestingly, when the uh, with the head down and uh, bottom of the lung up, so they hang the monkey through the legs, and they measure the perfusion. It stayed the same. The bottom of the lung and back of the lung stayed the most perfused area it means that there is no significant effect of gravity the only change happened when they tried the same perfusion test on prone position so on prone position you have almost equal or even distribution of blood sorry through the lung and we know that in subine position you have the front part of the lung and the back part of the lung so the front is getting less blood and the back of the lung is getting more blood in subine position the opposite for the ventilation the front part of the lung in units is more uh, towards more 
compliant uh, and easy ventilated compared to the back of the lung. So we have significant distance between perfusion and ventilation. If you shift the infant to prone position, then the perfusion will be almost the same back and front, which will be consistent with or very close to the ventilation. So you have the distance between ventilation, difference between ventilation and perfusion is much less. So the prone position is very helpful in infants with the ventilation perfusion mismatch. Clinical tips. Brown position is generally beneficial for infants with ventilation perfusion mismatch. What about heart rate? For the capillaries to be perfused, sorry, capillaries to be um, accepting the oxygen while passing through the capillaries or capillary blood flow. So we have in this axis a time, and we have the nitrous oxide. So nitrous oxide. So uh, uh, um, ignore this curve, and you have normal oxygen curve. So the in normal subject, for the capillaries to get enough or fully saturated with the oxygen through the alveoli, it needs short time about 0.25 of the second. So we have 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0 0.75 of second. So to estimate or to calculate the transition time of the blood through the lung, divide 60 over the heart rate. So 60 seconds or divided by heart rate. So if you have infant heart rate was 120, so the transition time is around 0 0.5. So the time is enough in healthy in healthy subject to get the capillary blood fully saturated with oxygen but the condition is different if you have chronic lung disease or if you have infant with parenchymal lung disease like pneumonia so the infant needs more time exposure of the capillary blood through the alveoli to get fully saturated with oxygen so if you have tachycardia it means that the transition time will be less for example, if you have heart rate of 180, then 60 divided by 180, you have 0 0.3, 0 0.3 of seconds. So you, you, there is not enough time for the capillary blood to get fully saturated with oxygen. So tachycardia might impact hypoxemia, especially significant tachycardia with heart rate more than 180 beats per minute. Clinical tips from the previous slide, tachycardia might worsen hypoxemia in infants with ventilation perfusion mismatch. The most common reasons are iatrogenic. For example, high doses of caffeine or inotropes. In this situation, you have to wean the inotrope. You have significant, for example, um, beta stimulation through dobutamine or dopamine or uh, epinephrine. And kind of stable hemodynamics, then you have to start weaning the inotropes to improve the transition time and um, to decrease the impact of tachycardia on worsening of hypoxemia. Less common causes like tachyarrhythmia in this situation. What about crying? If you have infant who is crying and healthy, there is no problem. The, the healthy infant can cry for a long time without any issues. But in premature infant with the ventilation perfusion mismatch or significant right to left chant, when he cries, the pulmonary resistance might increase four times. Compliance might, de might be reduced by 50%. And the inspiratory expiratory ratio might become one to five. So we have significant increase in the expiration, which might actually um, reduce the functional residual capacity, uh, capacity significantly. This may lead to decreased decrease in ventilation perfusion ratio and increase right to left shunt through the lung. 
So for example, if you have infant, this infant with a ventilation perfusion mismatch or ratio of 0.37 and 20% right drift shunt. If you apply the oxygen reduction, he was on 35% and now 26% inspired oxygen. And he started to cry. He changed it to more significant uh, ventilation perfusion mismatch and more significant right drift shunt and now he's requiring more oxygen you need to settle this infant and once he recovered you can wean his oxygen back but you have to wean his oxygen very slowly clinical tips infants on mechanical ventilation and with ventilation perfusion mismatch might develop severe hypoxemia with agitation or crying increase right to left ventral shunt at the end of crying with significant increase of oxygen requirement mild stimulation helps with considering gradual weaning of oxygen even if arterial saturation is the within target limit so when once he settled down you can wean his oxygen back even if he stayed within the target limit because you remember that the right drift shunt increased significantly and with the right drift shunt you you may increase the oxygen without any improvement in saturation or aiming to improve the saturation at the same time you can wean back the oxygen without a significant change in the saturation Weaning should be stepwise, 2 to 5%, as we mentioned before, 5 minutes intervals. Record results on, the sh on a sheet to detect the relationship between inhaled oxygen, uh, fraction of oxygen, and saturation, and to detect consistency between the, your graph or uh, the relationship with predominance of either ventilation perfusion mismatch or severe mismatch and right drift chant. At the end, I have the conclusions of part one. Ventilation perfusion mismatch is the most common mechanism of hypoxemia in sick infants. Any condition affecting parenchymal lung disease has a degree of ventilation perfusion mismatch. Intrapulmonary right drift shunt is a severe uh, extreme of ventilation perfusion mismatch. Hypoxemia due to ventilation perfusion mismatch is responsive to increase, increasing fraction of oxygen. Arterial saturation is low in right drift shunt and might not improve with high fraction of oxygen. So weaning oxygen in this situation is possible even if the arterial saturation is, is is stayed within the target saturation body position heart rate and agitation are common confounders affecting the degree of ventilation perfusion mismatch thank you and wait for the next presentation which will is part two and i will discuss oxygen management of ventilation and perfusion mismatch with more case scenarios goodbye